I'm not gonna lie, I have never played System Shock in my life. The original game was out way before I was into gaming. And to be fair, I never had a chance to play it. And probably this is the big mistake. But when System Shock Remake was announced, uh, it piqued my interest. Because this game is actually a spiritual predecessor of the games like Bioshock. And I love Bioshock. And of course, it's a predecessor to all the other immersive sims after that. And to be fair, I expected kind of like an old school game that would be okay to play. But I didn't expect that I would actually love it. And yeah, in this video, we're going to be discussing System Shock Remake and deciding whether it's what to do by right now or not so without further ado let's just get it started and as always every single one of my videos i'm going to be giving you the answer right away to not waste your time and the answer is yes weirdly enough system shock remake is an amazing game however despite being a remake this is still old school boomer shooter with all its upsides and downsides so it will not be a great game for many of the modern gamers just because it's doing some things in an old school way not in a bad way but in an old school way but without details this doesn't make any sense so let me get into your details oh and this video is sponsored by well you by you just being here and you watching this video support this channel and which i am extremely thankful for but if you want to support a little bit beyond that you can hit that, that beautiful subscribe button down there or if you want to go beyond that you can go and click the join button and support the channel more tangibly and more firmly in any way thanks for being here now to the video so what do we need system shock remake this game is first person shooter through and through with some horror elements and when I say horror, I'm saying horror in very light term. This game is not very scary, but it's menacing and ominous. You're playing in more or less near future and you are playing as a hacker and you are being captured and given the task to, well, take out ethical restraints from a space station's AI called Shodan. You do that, you lose your consciousness and you wake up on the station as AI is trying to overtake everything and practically overtook everything already. And your goal is kind of to survive. Despite the game being a remake, it still has some pixelated look of an old school games. And, and to be fair, I actually really, really love it. it has has this modern look of very beautiful lighting and this very good color contrast but when you look closer into things you see all of those blocky things that makes it look very stylistic and i absolutely love it and the game really has very ominous atmosphere especially with an ai talking in the background which we're gonna touch in a second and it is very cool to play but what's important this is not an easy game to play the staple of the boomer shooters of being quite difficult for most is still here but the game also is giving you choice of your difficulty options you can choose four different options for difficulty including the combat including the story missions including the cyberspace which we're gonna touch in a second and including puzzles meaning that you can make puzzles as hard or as easy as you want and based on difficulty options that you play gameplay will be very different for you if you're choosing for example let's say easy combat difficulty the enemies will not be as abundant and that they will not respawn that often but if you're gonna choose a high difficulty that you will be constantly in a battle and constantly trying to find an ammo because yeah ammo is is not easy to find and more importantly if you can choose let's say store difficulty you actually only have only 10 hours to complete the game otherwise you will actually lose it as for the missions and the quests to be fair you don't have very defined missions you do have an overall goal but game is not telling you yeah yeah go here and do that game is telling you yeah you have this overall task to achieve on this floor and yeah go and achieve it which gives you more incentive to explore and see what this level actually has to give to you i simply love it at first when i started the game I was trying to understand what the hell I have to do, but after I realized that I actually have to find it myself, I was freed from the shackle of the quest markers and just explored everything in the levels. Which was great because when you explore levels, you find many things that will help you on the later levels. And speaking of levels, game is not corridor shooter. It's not very linear. It gives you an open level and yeah, you're free to explore this level, unlock different shortcuts, unlock different rooms, and you're free to explore entirety of this level and game has very good interaction system in that a lot of different things can be interacted but it doesn't really tell you that you, you can interact it and you need to actually learn what things that you can interact with and with things you cannot for example different buttons different levers you can turn on and turn off different lights what objects you need to pick up and what objects you need to ignore and by the way most objects you actually need to pick up because game has an interesting inventory system meaning that you do have an actual inventory and it has a tetris grid system when you need to put different objects and most objects are actually useful which game does not tell you in the beginning you need to discover it yourself for example you need to find abundance of food and drinks it would throughout the level
possible and even vending machines at first you don't even get why you need that but in reality you do need because the food and drinks are actually refilling your health they're not doing this in a big way but they do it small in a small way and you need that because the health packs are not abundant in the levels and the enemies are abundant in the level so you need to well get all the healing that you can plus all the other objects that you might think is junk and not worth picking up they are actually pick worth picking up because you actually can take them to a special well, terminal which will convert them into a currency which you can use to get other things like for example health packs or boosters or even ammo and weapons and speaking of ammo and weapons game has variety of different weapons and where the boomer shooter shows it's is that you don't have an abundant of ammo and especially on the first level you will mostly spend running around and combating enemies with your melee weapons because you don't have a lot of ammo and enemies can be pretty tough and they are respawning and abundant and enemies especially the long range shooting enemies can be a pain in the ass so you need to be very careful on what you shoot, how you shoot, and how many times you need to shoot them. Because sometimes it's better just sneak up on them and just bash them with your pipe or with your wrench. And if you understand the combat, it's not very difficult. But because of enemy variety, you need to choose how to fight different enemies differently. Because, yeah, your regular zombies are easy to fight, but uh, there are some enemies that will charge you very quickly and hit you very hard and you need to be very careful against that but one thing that i didn't like about enemies is their ai they're quite dumb it's very easy to avoid detection and it's very easy to avoid fire and it's very easy to just hide from them so you don't really need to fight everyone and everything to be fair game also has an interesting modification system that allows you to slot different modifications that will alter your game in a different way for example the most things that is inherent to the let's say uh, heart of the game is actually part of the modification for example you can actually slot a minimap modification that shows you minimap or you can just turn it off there are also a variety of other modifications for example that will highlight useful objects on a map for you and etc etc i didn't actually pay attention to modifications because modifications use up energy and when you, you need to balance your energy usage because some weapons require energy that are very powerful and you need to well well juggle basically not just your health and ammo but your energy meter as well and one of the more important thing of the game is cyberspace cyberspace is kind of like a completely different game within the game cyberspace can be accessed through different nodes and you need to access them for the missions and cyberspace is kind of like a transfer Transforming into this 3D old school well, shooter. I, I don't know how to explain it. Basically, you're flying into this cyberspace and you need to shoot different nodes in order to well progress to the missions. And it's actually not very boring. It's pretty fun and just gives you a very old school arcade look and feel. And with this bright neon lights, it looks pretty cool as well. Another thing that is important in the game is the puzzles. And puzzles can be in a few different varieties. And usually they are like connect different dots. Like for example, you have central point that put, puts out an energy and to connect this node to the end node and you do this by rotating different pipes and carefully guiding this energy to the end node another one is like connecting different uh, well energy uh, different plugs to nodes to well uh, direct the energy in a way that will fill up the puzzle meter to unlock that and not every puzzle is actually mandatory most of them are actually not mandatory and just allows you to unlock different shortcuts for example turn on different bridges or just unlock unlock different well, weapon caches and things like that and uh, different doors and things like that they're not very important but they're actually a very cool thing to have but one thing that makes game absolutely unforgettable is of course its main villain and a main villain is played by of course the shodan the ai the crazy ai that is hell-bent on destruction of humans with a god complex and she is insanely menacing like you see that she is gone crazy she is not like the calculated villain that wants to destroy she is crazy she she hates humanity with all her heart or whatever she has in this computer. She hates everyone and she sees every human like an insect, an insignificant specks of dust and want to wipe them out entirely. And every voice line that she makes is insanely menacing and scary with all the glitches, all the double voices and things like that. It is insanely good and probably if you want to play the game, play it for her. Because she creates an atmosphere like very few games do. Cameras and sensors scan your body, but you do not. But you do not, but, but you do not match any employee file. When my cyborgs bring you to an electrified interrogation bench, I will have your secrets, and you, and, and you will learn more 
about pain than you ever wanted to know. And speaking of atmosphere, game has a very, very good soundstage. And only two reasons why game can be called a horror is because of the villain and because of the soundstage. Because yeah, this makes the, the game very menacing and very eerie and for some even quite scary. But the game is not without its downsides. Game has a few flaws that I have discovered that might be turn off for many. And first thing is the game's save system. Because yeah, usually we are used to saving, uh, game auto saving all the time. And when you die, you just revert back a few minutes and just do it again. But here it's not. Game auto save system is very rudimentary. It saves quite rarely. Because game has open level system, there's not real incentive for the game to auto save. Because you're not actually accomplishing real tasks uh, unless you are accomplishing actual mission. And uh, yeah, it has very spotty, a very tricky save game system for the most modern gamers. But if you're an old school gamer and you are hitting the save button all the time, you're gonna feel like home here. And another thing that I discovered is, well, I had a few crashes in the game. And to be fair, I was playing the Epic game version and I had a few crashes and mainly those crashes were when I was going from one level to another. Just to let you know, it was not very often, but it was there a few times and yep, yeah, just like letting you know that it happened. Plus, what is great about this game that despite this game being full game, it's not even a full price game. This game is at $40 price tag. This game is at $40 price tag for the tier 1 countries and $30 for tier 2 countries. So it's not even a full price game for the full game. So is this game actually worth it to buy? Yes, I think it is. Only if you are ready for an old school, well, boomer shooter stuff. If you're not and if you want something modern like Call of Duty and things like that, well, this ain't it. It's not even, it's not even, it's not even like a modern Doom games. It's still like an old school game and you need to be ready for it. And, and overall, I think that this makes a very good case for the remakes and i think all the remakes should be something like that oh and by the way our steam curator page is already up and running so if you want to see all of my reviews video and a little bit of text review right there on steam before you're gonna buy anything just go and follow us there on steam so that you will not miss my reviews when you are buying the games now back to the video well this will be for today thank you for being here with me like the video if you like to subscribe more videos like this one and i'm gonna see you in the next one see ya